Now today, of course, is Monday, August 12th, and it's International Youth Day. It is a United Nations-led initiative that recognizes the potential power and contributions of young people across the world. The day serves as a reminder of the critical role youth play in shaping the present and future of our global community. The youth make up approximately 16% of the global population, and despite their significant number, young people often face unique challenges, including limited access to education, employment, health care, and political representation. International Youth Day aims to raise awareness about these issues and promote youth empowerment. UNICEF Nigeria Deputy Country Representative Dr. Ronak Khan joins us now to discuss the significance of this year's theme of International Youth Day. Of course, from clicks to progress, that's the theme, Youth Digital Pathways for Sustainable Development. Good to have you on Newsday. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Of course. Now, how does UNICEF quantify the impact of digital pathways on sustainable development goals in Nigeria? Um, UNICEF is working with both government as well as the private sector to ensure that youths in Nigeria, they have the ways and means to get the full advantage of digital technology. And this year's theme, as you just mentioned, it underscores the power of digital technology and then transform into that tangible action to spar both economic, political, as well as sustainable development for the benefit of Nigeria. So as uh, you may know that in 2018, UN launched this, the need for uh, the youth strategy. And in line with that in 2021, UNICEF Nigeria launched Generation Unlimited. The Generation Unlimited is a very ambitious program, but mainly focusing on the digital technologies as well. So it allows young people to access different kinds of tools. For example, uh, Nigerian Learning Passport, U-Report, Yoma, YPAT, and these tools, digital technology tools, allows young people to not only access their 21st century skills, but also a, a platform for them to prepare themselves for the job market, as well as amplify their voices using these digital technologies. All right, then, uh, thank you so much uh, for uh, the conversation that we're having today. When we talk about the challenges in digital access, we had uh, some guests uh, from WTech and uh, uh, another organization talking about, you know, the access being quite low, because despite the potential of these digital tools, many young people in Nigeria still face barriers to access this technology. So what steps are being taken to ensure that digital empowerment in itself is inclusive, especially for marginalized groups in in rural or underserved areas in Nigeria? You're absolutely right. Um, there are lots of challenges. Um, I mean, I can just cite a few. Uh, not all schools have uh, access to internet. Some schools don't have access to electricity that will allow them to have internet. Um, there are also issues in relation to the um, the tools, uh, for example, uh, the laptop and other things. So it needs to be part of the system in Nigeria. The education system needs reform, which will have the digital uh, learning as one of the integral part of the education system. And that requires uh, free internet uh, services to all the schools, and especially the schools in the most remote area. But it's not only the internet access. We also need to prepare the teachers as well, because the children won't be able to learn everything by themselves. So the education reform should also include the digital training for the teachers as well, and as well as create a community where not only the schools, but also the communities can also support this whole uh, revolution or uh, like, you know, this uh, initiative as well. Um, we cannot also only rely on government. We also need to look at 
public-private partnership as well. Uh, how do we also leverage all the um, public sectors to make sure that they also contribute to um, internet, to provide internet access, the towers in different uh, rural areas, whether they can also have some kind of contribution. But also, once children are at a certain stage, they also need to prepare themselves for their um, job market. And I would strongly uh, request all the private sectors to provide opportunities for young people through mentorship or internship program as well. So in nutshell, we need educational reform where digital uh, learning is an integral part. We need capacity development of the teachers, but also we need both public and private collaboration. Well said, especially when you're highlighting the fact that there's need for collaboration. But what, what is UNICEF doing when it comes to addressing the potential negative impacts of increased digitization, such as cyberbullying or internet addiction, when, especially when you're dealing with Nigerian youths? Well, uh, I think this needs uh, a, a, a wider discussion. Uh, because the cyberbully or like, you know, the, all the negative impact of uh, internet, it needs to start from home as well. So raising awareness and creating a, a huge amount of like, you know, um, um, awareness building within the families as well as in the communities, but also there needs to be very strict policies in relation to cyberbully as well. So UNICEF, as part of the UN family, we have been working with the relevant authorities to raise awareness about cyberbully, uh, for, especially for young children. But one of our main objectives is also to empower the parents as well. So the parents, they need to talk to their children. They need to ensure that the children are not surfing endlessly, uh, as you mentioned, addiction. So it needs to start also from the family as well as from the parents. Uh, uh, awareness will help in reducing both the cyberbully as well as in uh, addiction. All right, then. I mean, you've spoken about private, a uh, public-private partnership, um, but I want to talk about the role of you know the government in this because you know they are uh, responsible you know for the lives and the properties of our Nigerian citizens. So when you look at you know educational institutions, but then you and you also have government policies. What do you think should be focused on to better support the development of the digital skills among youth? You know, ensuring that they are equipped to contribute meaningfully to sustainable development. Uh, is the UNICEF looking to let's say you know partner with uh, the government to see if they can have a wider reach to be able to uh, reach its objective? We definitely are working with government because they are our primary partners. Um, so we are looking at uh, how the reform can be uh, obtained or reform can be designed in order to have uh, a comprehensive digital strategy for not only for school, but also for the young people as well. Um, um, I did mention the public-private partnership because also we need to uh, make sure that in order to bring everybody on board, the private sector also needs to work with the government as well and do a proper mapping. What is available in terms of policy, strategy, and then of course uh, implementation uh, is the end game of this whole strategy. So from UNICEF's side, we are working very closely in bringing uh, different kinds of educational reform including how to make the education system fit for 21st century school skill, including the digital technology and digital reform. Fantastic. Now, of course, you know, Nigeria is a very unique country. So what strategies um, is UNICEF using in, when it comes to adapting its digital empowerment strategies to align with Nigeria's cultural and socioeconomic realities? So um, UNICEF has, uh, as I mentioned, launched this Generation Unlimited. And one of the objectives of this is 
it's quite ambitious to bring at least 20 million people to provide different kinds of skills, but a lot of these skills should be through digital platforms or digital tools. Um, so this allows uh, young people who otherwise wouldn't have any opportunity to acquire their skills, but they can just, you know, get themselves enrolled in a Nigerian learning passport, which we are working very closely with the government through YPAT. So this is another platform for young people to also uh, acquire different kinds of entrepreneurial skill. Um, um, we also have engaged young people through a platform called you Report, where we get to know what the young people are thinking about their communities, about their futures, about their like uh, job prospect. So they, these are different kinds of tools that we have launched and we allow the young people not only to acquire skills for uh, them, for example, uh, start a startup company uh, and other entrepreneurial skills, but also we would like to hear from them using these digital technologies because sometimes we think that we know it all for young people, but our main objective is to design program based on the feedback from these young people to ensure that whatever uh, programs are designed using this di digital platform or dis digital technologies are fit for purpose as per their needs. Mm. All right, then, if we talk about, um, let's talk about future trends and opportunities, because if we're starting to look ahead at um, what these trends or emerging opportunities, what do you see in the digital space that could further empower young people to contribute uh, to sustainable development in Africa, in the tech space? If you could, you know, take a glimpse into the future. <laughs> Um, it's a very important question. Um, I, I think the, the whole world is moving very fast. Um, and, and so the online engagements uh, using digital tool needs to be very, very meaningful. It's not only going there and then surfing. So the digital uh, technology should allow to amplify the young people's voice, but also they can contribute to different kinds of strategic direction that the government is also uh, thinking about um, so that they can also voice their political opinion but also share their ideas on how to make uh, the job market more useful. The digital technology also allows young people to not only be the citizen of one country but the citizen of the whole globe as well. If a young person has the proper skill, he or she can actually work for anywhere in the world. And I think we really need to take the advantage of this uh, globalization through this digitalization. So to me, the future cannot be always bleak. It depends on how we shape the future by providing the young people their required skills, and especially the 21st century skills. This has been a very insightful interview, and we'd like to thank you for your time and contribution. Dr. Ronak Khan, the Deputy Country Representative of UNICEF, thank you so much for joining us here on Newsday.